Welcome, I'm Ken Leon, Director of Equity Research, and here to talk to you about video streaming trends in 2023. I am the analyst who covers the particular industry, movies and entertainment. Here's our disclaimers. So today we're gonna to cover uh, the secular versus cyclical trends. Um, many of you are streaming, so just to give you a kind of a peek into viewing habits, what we're seeing with the proliferation of rate plans, the business risks which have changed from subscriber growth to a greater focus on profitability and free cash flow. And my focus is mostly the largest companies in this area, uh, Netflix, Disney, Paramount Global, Warner Brothers Discovery, but we'll be referencing others that are in the space. So 2022 uh, was a disappointing year for this industry, down 50%. And much of it has to do with the uncertainties or risk related to video streaming. Just to emphasize that point, when you look at a three-year performance chart, you can see that this industry was lockstep with either the S&P 500 or the consumer discretionary sector doing pretty good during the pandemic but there were increasing questions as more of these companies wanted to aggressively get into video streaming. So what can go right or wrong in 2023? And bridging the theme we have from equity strategy of crossing the valley from perhaps um, a difficult first half to a more optimistic second half uh, we're likely to see some form of recession in the first half of 2023. It has already uh, reduced advertising revenue. Uh, we might see a pickup of subscriber churn uh, and operating losses uh, so that there will be more discipline on content spend and households might be looking at their budget and cutting back on the number of subscriptions. On the bull case is likely the longer term, which we'll point out, uh, which is showing that linear is replacing broadcast and pay TV. Uh, the advertisers and marketers will follow, and uh, clearly the market leaders are gaining market share. To that point, just on the secular trend, um, in 2022, uh, streaming is now done by more than 50% of households, yet the marketers, the advertising spend, is still only 22%. To us, that's big opportunity over the next three to five years. Uh, and we definitely think that will happen. In terms of the average hours of video per day or the average streaming services used, it's kind of tilted more for affluent families and young and active who have the most services. Um, and they are also, a, a at least the affluent, less prone to churn. Um, but the dynamics here are going to play out. So really, subscriber loyalty is important because if you can arrest churn, that's going to help revenue uh, and cash flow. Uh, and some of the attributes would be certainly having great content offerings, indispensable where you always want to come back. You can have that, obviously, with programming and a deep library. The customer relationship starts with the platform. So the investment in the technology, the ability to personalize and make it easy uh, for the viewer to search and preview function. Netflix is really the only one best in class that can do that today. The others are trying to catch up. Uh, and we think that as you look ahead, all of these aspects are going to be important along with viewer behavior, because that's what's gonna drive advertising spending. So the competitive landscape is pretty crowded and we, we highlight it in color, the companies we cover. Uh, you can see on the top part that where the greatest viewing is being done with YouTube, part of Alphabet, um, Google, Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, uh, the Disney, um, Hulu and Disney Plus, and then um, Warner Brothers Discovery, which has HBO Max and Discovery. But the question is for the ones at the bottom or even others, is whether they can continue uh, to make these sizable capital investments 
and get a higher share of streaming. So when we look at uh, the subscription tiers, uh, back in uh, the fourth quarter of 2022, lots of attention was on the introduction of Netflix with its basic ad program at $6.99. It has four tiers. The premium ad free is just under $20, but has the lowest churn. It's giving all the bells and whistles and high def. Uh, Disney Plus came out with um, its ad uh, free, disc uh, I'm sorry, ad pay at $7.99 and it's ad free at $10.99. And of course, there's bundling where you pay more. In the case of Disney, that would include ESPN plus Hulu. Um, the monthly pricing, again, can be you know, very complex and um, it does add up. So again, you know, we think that uh, households are gonna make decisions, probably keep three. Uh, those who have more than five, are gonna realize that their viewing time is quite low. <clears throat> uh, this is a, another service, um, and in 2022, for some of these players, it's gonna be over a billion dollars for Pluto. Uh, this is called Free Ad Supported TV Services, or FAST. This is where the subscriber doesn't pay anything, uh, but they're going to see lots of minutes, maybe up to 10 minutes per hour of advertising. Um, and some of the major companies that we cover, Fox with Tubi, Paramount Global with Pluto, and Freebie, which is a new name uh, for this fast service from Amazon. Uh, likewise, when we look then at uh, the losses that were noted for streaming, uh, Netflix was the only profitable company. And you can see here in orange, positive EBITDA. What got everyone's attention was Disney's results, where they reported a $1.4 billion loss. Uh, that also was the trigger for the change of the CEO back to Bob Iger from Bob Chapek. Um, and the other companies have more work to do uh, to really get to profitability. Likewise, on balance sheet, um, you know, Netflix really hasn't participated in acquisitions. The others have. Uh, in the case of Disney, with $48 billion of debt, uh, it, was, it was Bob Iger. It was back in 2019, did a $71 billion deal for 21 first century Fox. That added $20 billion of debt. There was up to $2 billion of synergy in 21, uh, but investors immediately had to focus on the heavy, heavy spend on streaming done in 22 by Disney. And... Iger is going to have to figure out what he wants to do uh, with the streaming business along with uh, assets that uh, are ESPN uh, and Hulu. Um, in the case of Hulu, they have, uh, it's a joint venture with Comcast, but Comcast has a put to Disney by 2024 to buy it. And Warner Brothers Discovery with the acquisition of Warner Brothers from AT&T Discovery has the sizable debt you see here. And, and to the far right, you can see Netflix is just outpacing everyone on profitability and return on equity. Which brings us to our last slide, which is our recommendations within movies and entertainment. Uh, Netflix, we upgraded uh, to a buy on December 28th. Um, and we think uh, that when you look at their position um, they're in a, a great area of leveraging um, a best-in-class platform for technology. Uh, they can curate data programming uh, by country. Uh, they're able to have the greatest, most active lineup of, of new episodes and new shows and events. And the management's been in place for over 10 years. Uh, so they're growing organically, while the other companies in the streaming space are figuring out or trying to streamline acquisitions, pay down debt, or change managements. Yeah, Disney, we have it as a buy. We put it on at around 95, got as high as 120. Um, it's a turnaround story, and it's very much is going to be event catalyst driven uh, to what Disney wants to do with its strategy and streaming. Uh, Live Nation Entertainment, 
is not in streaming, uh, but it's the dominant global player in terms of live entertainment or concerts uh, with over 320 venues around the world. Uh, we did get uh, obviously hurt by the Taylor Swift ticket frenzy. I think they'll do better. Certainly, uh, you know, Southwest Air might have been even worse than that. But they got six and a half to seven billion dollars of deferred revenue, which are tickets to be used for events in 2023. There is no one anywhere close to Live Nation Entertainment. Holds on Paramount Global. Roku, we had a strong sell, took it as a hold um, in the 40s, and uh, they're just coming out with their own smart TVs uh, called Roku, uh, and they're heavily dependent on advertising, which in the first half of 23 could be affected by the recession. Lastly, uh, holds on Warner Brothers, and Fox is a pure play on live sports and live inter and uh, live news. So with that, um, if you want to get more on our research for movies and entertainment or these companies, please visit MarketScope Advisor. Thank you.